If we know W, we can find P and T either by resolving or by drawing a vector triangle. In this example, we're going to try the vector triangle approach. So before we can draw the triangle, we need to have a suitable scale. And I think that if we have 5 millimetres representing 1 newton, then the vector for the weight would be 125 millimetres. I need to draw a vector to represent the weight, so I'm going to draw a line vertically downwards 125 millimetres long. Which will just fit on the page. So there's my 25 newtons. Now to draw the vector diagram, I need to choose now whether to do vector P or vector T. I think it's going to be most convenient to deal with vector P next. So the rule is for drawing vector diagrams, you draw the first vector, where the first vector ends, you draw the arrow to represent the second vector. But I have a problem. Although I know the direction of P, I don't know the value of the force. So I don't know how long to draw my vector arrow. So I could start drawing an arrow at right angles to the weight, but I don't know how long to draw it. So my vector would start there. And it would come in this direction. So unfortunately, I don't know how long to draw it. So I'm just going to draw a construction line over there. If I did know how long to draw this vector arrow, I'll put the arrow head on the end, and from the end of this arrow I would then need to draw a vector in the direction of the remaining force, which is T. And the arrow for T would take me from the end, from where the P arrow ended, back to the beginning of my diagram. But of course, I can't start my T arrow on this line because I don't know where the P arrow ends. But what I can do is I can cheat. I know that wherever the P arrow comes to, the T arrow will take us back to the start. So I can cheat by drawing the T arrow backwards. So if I return to the start of my diagram and I draw a line that's in the direction that the T arrow would take and the T arrow makes an angle of 40 degrees with the vertical So if I draw a line at 40 degrees to the vertical This is the direction that the T arrow would take. And now I've completed those arrows, it means that I am able to find the vectors for P and for T. Since the vector for P would take me from the bottom of the weight as far as this point here. So I've fixed its length. And then after the vector for P, we then have the vector for T returning us to the start. So the initial vector was the weight. I've now been able to fix the length of the vector which acts to the left, in other words, the force P. And we've also fixed the length of the diagonal vector, in other words, the value of the force T. And we can find the values of P and T 
by measuring. So I make the arrow for P to be 102 millimeters long, 102 millimeters, but five millimeters for every newton. That's near enough 20 newtons. And the arrow for T is 160 millimeters long. So 160 millimeters at 5 millimeters for every newton is 32 newtons. So we found that the value for T is 32 newtons, that's the tension in the string. And the value for P is 20 newtons, that's the force put into the side.